listening to Alish Quay again, Magyar TV, Magyar 2011 conference, Salt Lake City, Utah, and I'm honoured, honoured to be here with Jeff Patton. I'm honoured to be here too. How you doing? I'm honoured. Why am I so honoured? Well, just to give you a little bit of story and get a feel for what this conference really is about. About four months ago, I was working on a really large project. It's a very big project for a large client. We had so many user stories, and I couldn't find a way to, to, to manage those user stories as a lead VA. And somebody mentioned something about story mapping, so I went online, did some research, came across a website, there was some detailed information about how to create story maps. And I went about, for the first time, creating story maps uh, around the user stories, which made it easier to communicate with all the various teams across the companies about how to, you know, what stories we were going to work on, the slicing and other stuff. And then today, whilst at the Agile 2011 conference, one of the workshops was about user story mapping. And I thought, okay, let me go and actually check this out. And went there, was given some great content, great information. And then when I checked out the website that um, the speaker was talking about, guess what? It was exactly the same website where I got that information from, where I was able to create my first user story map. But before I can get it, you know, so you can feel the excitement, that's why I feel so honored. But before we go on, tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, we're, we're an Agile conference. Uh, I've been around in the Agile space for a long time, and uh, uh, I've been in software development for getting close to 20 years now, and okay. I'm, I'm oldish, and uh, uh, okay. uh, uh, been doing, was doing something else a little bit before, and I stumbled. Uh, I went to I went to college to commercial art, and I uh, uh, it's too much work, and you don't get paid very much. And uh, software was uh, computer science was easy, and uh, anybody who uh, writes software and knows a little bit about art is automatically the UI guy. Uh, and so the, during the '90s, I uh, did a fair bit of software development. Okay. And I did a lot of the, the, the way you watch the way it looked and. Because I could talk to people, uh, I ended up, being, ended up being the customer-facing UI guy. Okay. So I got out in front of people a lot, and I uh, was it was great. I was able to be a bit of a jack of all trades. Yeah. And then, uh, accidentally, in a weird backhanded way, in uh, in 2000, I uh, it was sort of searching. I, mean, I get very passionate about making. I like making things. Okay. I like making stuff that people use. Okay. And, uh, uh, and uh, I, I wanted to be better at it, and uh, I fell into a new company that was doing this new extreme programming thing in 2000, and uh, they were using these uh, story things, and uh, and the, the term Agile hadn't been coined yet, so I kind of got in on, uh, I started with this company doing XP stuff, and they hired Ken Beck to come in and uh, teach the, the, the team, and hired a bunch of other uh, super smart people. And man, just dumb luck. I, I got in on the ground floor of this thing. So as long as there's been uh, this Agile thing, the term Agile was going in 2001, I've just always been there. So uh, what's to tell? I have uh, worked at a few different, uh, uh, worked as a product manager, worked, product manager, worked as a lead engineer. Uh, uh, Done most roles, spent a long time with a company called ThoughtWorks, uh, and, uh, and uh, right now I spend a lot of time working with a variety of different companies, uh, doing stuff I really like. And right now, that's helping other people build really good products or things that they like to do. Okay, so I mean that's great, and, and you know what, you're you're a veteran, and like I said, you know I've just seen the way that you've been received here by many people, and just to be even as we're just doing this interview, you had somebody come up and say, you know, great, great workshop, you know, so you're obviously creating great value, and we appreciate that. So user story mapping, or story mapping, what what is it for, and why should people consider using it? Uh, uh that's the. Uh, the, you know, the 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 purpose of story mapping uh, for me is to the uh, you know, stories by themselves have lots of different purposes. That's that's the cool thing about them. Uh, uh, the stories uh, at their outset are uh, you, you might write them down to make sense of what the, the product is going to be, and then uh, I might shuffle them around to prioritize them. I might uh, move them in an order to talk about the flow of use. Uh, uh, I might break big ones down into small ones to, to uh, talk about certain aspects. I might prioritize them in the order that I'm going to build them. Uh, I might prioritize them in the, 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 
their importance uh, from uh, the customer's uh, perspective or user's perspective. And uh, the story map is just a simple structure to help me start to see how big things break down into little things, uh, make sense of it from a user's perspective, and make sense of it from uh, make sense of it from uh, how am I going to build it perspective. Okay. Simple shape, left to right is the, the flow of use, top to bottom is a decomposition of uh, break things down uh, to, to build. Okay. So I noticed that you were talking about the three C's, of, which are five C's for yourself. Um, and one of the things, obviously, we've got the card, we've got the, co um, the conversation, and then the... Uh, construction and consequences. Uh, so the, yeah. Uh, what is the acceptance, acceptance, I, acceptance? Confirmation, that's it. So uh, got the yeah, card, card, conversation, confirmation, confirmation construction. construction. I had to make them start with C. You know, so of they, course, uh, they, it worked uh, well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I can uh, find anything else, a little bit of a force, but uh, uh, the real thing that's going on there is, you know, if we're, uh, uh, so uh, here's a small tidbit about, everybody refers to stories as user stories. Okay. Uh, the, the, these days, so many people are adopting Agile by way of coming through Scrum, yeah. and a lot of people don't, uh, a lot of newer people don't know that the story thing, their stories came out of... Uh, came out of extreme programming okay. process. And a lot of people were learn about user stories by way of how Mike Cohn has a, a super fabulous writer, explains things really well, and he's got a great book called User Stories Applied. It's been around a long time. Yeah. Um, but they weren't originally called user stories. They were called stories. And the real reason they were called stories is not because they were about what users did with the software. It was, uh, they were called that because we were supposed to write something down, anything down, and if you wanted something and I was going to help you build it, uh, I want to hear you tell me a story. Okay. So they're called stories because they were meant for you to ta tell me. Okay. Um, and we've uh, sort of lost that. Uh, and uh, I hear constantly, uh, how do I write good user stories? Yes. Well, uh, it's a, a little bit... Uh, how do you, like, uh, I'm trying to think of something uh, pithy to say, is uh, how do you watch good radio? It's, well, it, it, you're not supposed to. You're supposed to speak them. You tell them. You talk. Uh, and uh, what, what you write down is that. Oh, yeah, I, see, I lost the plot. Uh, no, so, uh, so you're supposed to talk about them, and that for, it's from that that you learn uh, 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 what we should build, and then this is an agile process. Once you build them, uh, or once you build some software, then the next step is to look at that and see if that's actually what you want. And, uh, so there's this idea that we can't understand each other by exchanging documents, so we should tell a story, okay. and we can't uh, know if we built the right thing until we uh, really see it and respond to it. Okay. So the two primary mistakes that people make uh, in agile development and working with stories uh, is they revert back to what, what didn't work before, okay. which was to write good stories. Uh, you know, if whatever requirements process they had uh, wasn't working before, uh, and they've heard this Agile stuff, and Agile says use stories, they're going to use stories, and so they try and figure out how to write good stories. Yeah. And, uh, the point was, writing, the writing was the Fine. problem, Fine. not the, the format. Fine. And then we sort of forget that uh, once you build it, there's going to be change. Okay. And uh, you see agile projects that fail. You see a lot of people worried about writing good stories, and you see a lot of people uh, getting uh, complex that once they build software and look at it, it needs to change. Okay. Uh, which is that's been the whole point all along. Okay. You're not supposed to write them, and the software changes. Cool. So the key here, what I'm getting from that is the key here is not really what you're writing down, but it's more the conversation that you're going to have. Uh, and the acceptance criteria that you actually catch you is the confirmation of what you've discussed. That's right. Uh, uh, if there's acceptance criteria on a story, it should mean there has been a discussion. Right. Uh, and one of the, the failure modes of Agile sometimes is a developer saying, well, I'm not going to talk to you about that story until you've written the acceptance Correct. criteria. Correct, yeah. yeah. Uh, exactly backwards. Okay. <laughs> That's a... Uh, uh, 
Uh, uh, of course, of course. And that's great. Of <laughs> no, that's great. I mean, to me, that, that's a great learning curve. And that's what I've been saying to you guys for afternoons. It's only when you come to these places that you learn stuff that you could never read in book. I've read my um, Collins book, and um, user stories applied. I've, I've scribbled it out. I've yellow. You know, I've done it. Excellent book. Uh, and one of the mistakes that I've been making up until now, and I could put my hand up, and I'm sure many of the people out there as well have been doing is when writing those user stories is actually writing acceptance criteria directly with the user story, and then having a conversation afterwards. Whereas what I've been picking up from this weekend is actually what, no, that's not it. You catch it, you write that user story, placeholder, have that conversation. From that conversation, you have an agreement on what the acceptance criteria is. So I'm going to be changing the way that I'm going to be doing stuff. Uh, you uh, uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, a good thing to do is, yeah, it's okay to uh, work out what's in your head. Yep. Write things down. Yep. But, uh, and you could write down acceptance criteria. Okay. But never hand off. Uh, and uh, you know, one of the things that worked for me when I was uh, uh, coaching teams is yep. let anybody write down, work through what you want, uh, work through everything you've got, but keep it to yourself, show up, have that conversation, and say, here's what I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, so the little bit of slides I showed today, yeah, I, yeah. I showed that you come in with one idea, yeah. uh, you describe to somebody else, they form a slightly different idea, yeah. and through conversation you arrive at something that was different work out those uh, acceptance criteria if they're too fully formed uh, makes it harder for you to change your mind. Uh, of course. Then that's all. Yeah, I guess that's where, where, where the challenge is, where the correction needs to come, which is writing them too fully out beforehand is not necessarily the best way to go about it. And like you said, handing it over and saying, okay, this is it, that's definitely not the way. So there's learning there for myself and I'm sure there's learning there for you too. So. How can people get hold of you? How can people get access to your website? How can people contact you? You know, how can, uh, so I know you've got a book coming out soon, so. I'm easy to find on the web. Uh, just under Jeff Patton, you'll find uh, my website is agileproductdesign.com. It's so super, uh, I'm in the process of trying to get myself back up, updated. Uh, there's a lot of content that's on there that's been there a while, and uh, hopefully I'll be uh, back up to speed and starting to blog again. Okay. I've been on full blast, but I've been fairly busy and I've been trying to write. And uh, with luck, uh, a book on story mapping, uh, uh, book on story map mapping uh, published via O'Reilly should be out. Uh, it's a uh, draft is uh, that close to done, and now I'm at a point of uh, iterating it or reworking it, and uh, it should be out as an ebook before the end of the year and as a paperback later. As soon as it be done, done. Yeah, or uh, dumb done. I doubt it'd be dumb done. I think it'd be dumb done. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right, Hopefully, yeah. Uh, well, what is it? Uh, there's an old uh, Da Vinci uh, quote so that uh, the, the great art is never finished, it's uh, merely abandoned. Uh, so uh, I'll abandon it uh, soon <laughs> enough. Uh, and so. then we'll see a revised edition because yes. it's iterative, uh, right? That's correct. There's all, that's what second editions are for. Cool. Uh, what second books are for. It's been a pleasure. Really appreciate um, everything that you've hey, done. A uh, high point for me was meeting you. So uh, oh, good, wow. good to meet you too. So I uh, so didn't know who you were until until uh, we met here at the conference. So, appreciate that. Thank you very much. All the best. Happy for your work.